Okay, so you were curious about what is the metaverse? Yes, um, and like, how is it different from the internet? So, uh, well, the metaverse, I think basically re refers to 3D worlds on that, but the, but there've been 3D uh, worlds on the internet that multiple people could go into for many years. The big difference is that now these 3D worlds, I'll look, fly up here. I'm in crypto voxels right now, which I think is like the most important, one of the most important parts of the metaverse right now. So here I see a 3D world. There's, oh look, they got a little ocean over there. Very this nice. time here. The, the big difference now though, is that you can, buy land in the metaverse and own it um, in a way that uh, it's not like in the old days, if you bought something in a computer game, you're basically buying something from a corporation, right? And the corporation owns the server, they own everything about the game. So the corporation, you know, if they go out of business or if they shut down the server or if they just decide, they don't want you to own that thing anymore. They could always just take it back. And so the difference now is the these 3D worlds and these games are built on the same technology that Bitcoin is built on. Bitcoin being basically, you know, uh, basically uses the blockchain, right? Yeah. And the blockchain is basically just a database that no one can alter. You know, it's the only way to make an entry or change something in the database is to follow the rules of the software code of Bitcoin, which everyone um, on the Bitcoin network agrees is the software code and no, no company or country or anyone can go on the blockchain and say, you no longer own this Bitcoin. You, you, it's How has there not been hackers in the blockchain? Oh, there have been there have been hacks in, in the early days of Bitcoin. There were some bugs found. You know, the first few years, it, it's it, Bitcoin's been under attack ever since it was created. That's how they find the flaws in it, and they improve the code and add security. And there's a lot of other cryptocurrencies that have been created mm -hmm. over the years, and some of those have had flaws, and those have been hacked. But you just learn from the the hacking and fix the hole and Bitcoin is now, uh, it's now incredibly secure. And, and really the easiest way to steal cryptocurrency is not to hack the, the blockchain, it's to hack your computer. Like it's way easier to get through your personal, whatever security you have on your computer than it is to hack the Bitcoin blockchain. Or okay. if uh, there's you know, these exchanges that run servers where people can go and buy and sell cryptocurrency. But you know, those exchanges are computers that those are much easier to hack than the Bitcoin blockchain. And so that's that's where most of the hacks have happened. It's just been people breaking into computers and stealing cryptocurrency that way. But even right. that doesn't happen very often anymore, it seems. So here's my question. And it's kind of like those. What is the the initials of the thing like the artwork you can buy online that stays online and digital? NFTs. Those things. Yeah. NFT. It's like why would someone want to invest in the metaverse to have property? Like it's not real. Like you can't live in it. Yeah. Well, the for me, I mean, it's a uh, as an if you're an artist. I mean, the reason an NFT is a thing. And it, it, NFT is basically you convert a piece of art into a digital thing that can exist on the internet or on the blockchain. But it's again, a, a digital thing that you can't copy. You know, just like there's there, if you have five Bitcoin, I can't just make five Bitcoin here. And I, I certainly can't copy your five Bitcoin because that's that's the whole basis of it is that you cannot just duplicate anything there's a they've figured out a way to make digital information um uncopyable and also permanent so it's you can't 
There's no way to replicate your digital Bitcoin or your digital NFT, and there's no way to destroy it. So if you, if you're an artist and you care about like your art lasting for a long time, if you put it on the blockchain, it's now in a place where it can last forever, you know, but and that's it's the not physical. Like, I guess my thing is, and I know it's like old school thinking, obviously, um, and I need to evolve. However, my thing is, even if you're an artist and you're like, oh, this is going to be preserved throughout however long the system doesn't crash or whatever, or like we don't become dinosaurs, you know, ha or, you know, uh, World War Three or a global pandemic. Um, if you're like, what would be the draw of owning a piece of art that you can't physically have like in your space in your physical space on a day-to-day -day basis and enjoy i mean well you could um i mean you could make a physical copy of any nft that you that you buy just okay. like you could of anything if you need a physical copy uh but if you're trying say to make money from it you own the nft and so if the if it's a, a visual image or a video or a, a song that you can make money from, having it on the blockchain has, gives you proof of ownership. So like, you know, if you wanna say you wanna record a song in the old days, you have to get a studio to uh, help you release it and then help distribute it. And, and hopefully you get a little bit of money back through that, you know, that process of, right. uh, but now, it's we're evolving very quickly to a point where if you record a song, you release it as an NFT, and then people who want to listen to it get it through the blockchain or get it through some means. But because it's now tied to this NFT, it can be tied to you forever. So and you then can, it cuts out the middleman, like the middle totally person. cuts yeah. out the middleman. That's and that's what's happening with the art NFT. So if you're an artist and you start releasing your art as pictures and just sell them. Not only do you get money if you sell your art for twenty dollars, but you because it's all on the blockchain, they have built it so you actually get a little percentage every time that art is resold. So it's you know if you're just doing a normal painting and you sell it, you get a thousand dollars for it, great. But then they sell it and they get ten thousand. Then they sell it, they get a hundred thousand, and you're sitting here the original artist. You're not getting any of that appreciation. But with NFTs, you do. So it's like you can just sell your art cheap, let people trade it, and, and if it goes up in value, you just start keep raking in little commissions from every time they sell it again. No middleman at all. It's just all controlled by the code of the blockchain. Hmm. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty, so from making money with music or art, movies, um, it's, uh, it's gonna be very good for artists, and it is right now good for artists. And, and if you, if as an artist, if you like the idea of your art lasting forever, which you know, that was the thing that really got me hooked. I was like, that was, uh, you know, I, I like the idea of being able to create something and having it just last forever throughout history. So, I mean, for as long as the systems don't crash and we still have electricity. Right. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you think like in a, the way I look at it, like the minute you know, one of the first thing that's what, like the blockchain is just, you know, Bitcoin's blockchain, it's just, it's literally just like one chain, you know, it's like, so it's, you don't, um, you don't get just one piece of the blockchain, you get every bit of it, you get the entire history of it. It's a, uh, so it's like, the minute humans start to expand out into space, the blockchains are going to just go with them, there's going to be copies of everything on the blockchains that's going to follow humanity wherever we go. But like the VHS tapes or paintings or whatever, even the pyramids, nothing that's physical is going to last as long as digital information. And amongst digital information, nothing's, I think blockchains are going to last longer than any other bit of digital information. So we're basically just going to turn into digital aliens and expand out into the universe and leave earth. We're going to shed earth and be like, what fools we were to buy art and go to the Louvre. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if we'll become digital aliens. I mean, you might be right, but. Um, no, but but the, is this? But this is your own metaverse. It's not a shared metaverse with other people. No, this is crypto voxels. I didn't create this. This piece, this right here, this little square here on the ground, is my mm -hmm. parcel. I bought this piece. 
And I put this little purple wall here because, <laughs> right? Tiny. Because here, this wall next to mine, someone put a pretty risque image of a like a cute pixie or something or elf. So yeah. I put this uh, wall here as my funny way of like blocking their, you know, mildly adult <laughs> thing. And so, and so going up from this little square, I've put these photos and stuff here. How far up does your property go? How, how tall can you make it? Very good question. So in crypto voxels, you can only go up, uh, well, only up, uh, depending on the parcel. Let's see, can I like build here? So it looks like in this area, you can go up fairly high. Mm -hmm. I don't know if my partial lets you go up this high. I have to test that. But, Are there um, any earthquakes in the metaverse? Another good question. No, uh, not. I don't believe crypto voxels as implemented. But this is just one world, okay? So why don't I show you a, a couple other worlds, okay? Um, what is that thing floating in the sky? Is it a frog? Let's see. A fingerprint. It does look frog-like? Yeah, I'd say that's kind of a, that's a frog, frog head. It's not yours. No, no. And you see how there's all these art. There's a lot of museums in the metaverse. So these are this place is just filled with museums. These are probably all NFTs in here that you can buy. And it's as simple as, you know, when you see one, you can usually just click on it and like I'm gonna click on this one. Yeah, and this is a here's a description. Here's the owner, the creator. And here, view on OpenSea. You just click on that, you go straight to the online marketplace, and I can make an offer and buy that piece of art. And uh Wow. Or you can bid on it. Sometimes you can buy it. Sometimes you have to bid on it, depending on how they're uh, doing that. OK, let's see here. So there's like unlimited worlds. Um, hold, let's see. I'm going to stop my share for a sec. Sure. This is all very overwhelming, but interesting. <laughs> All right, I got stuck in full screen because my Zoom was uh, blocking the exit. Okay, so that was Crypto Voxels. Um, that's the name of the world. That's the name of the world. And well, let me show you, I'll show you a couple other things. About. So this is the map of Crypto Voxels down here. And the first world, on crypto voxels was this big square over here. <clears throat> so they made this big square and started selling it. And then they were like, and everything on there started to sell. And so then they created more worlds. And there's no reason <clears throat> they can just create as many more worlds as they want. Wait, so all so many people from all around the world have <laughs> the Bronx. Um, people from all over the world have bought plots of land in the metaverse in, in this particular one. Yeah, I'm sure they people from every corner of the earth have bought, you know, property in uh, crypto voxels. It's not considered the most, it doesn't get the most press, but it's one of the first ones um, because I started my own called Utopia 42. And I can show that to you. And there's another one that gets a lot of attention called uh, Decentraland. Did uh, you create it when you were 42 years old? No. Well, maybe. No, no, it's not that long ago. <laughs> no, you don't. You, do you have another guess of why it's called Utopia 42? 42. Uh, 42 um, 42 is a very. Reference, it's a reference it, to like like George Orwell or something. <laughs> close. It is a. He, that was 84. Yes. Um, 42. Jack Kerouac. I'm just kidding. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, okay. Have you heard of, have you read oh, that? Oh yeah, I just didn't read it. So yeah, this is, uh, let me see, Decentraland wants me to sign something to say hello. So I'll do that. Um, this is Decentraland, you'll see if we can get in here, it'll look a little different. So like how many worlds are there currently? Um, well, 
I mean, I think Decentraland is like, seems to be the most mainstream, most popular one. Uh, Crypto Voxels, also huge. There's something called uh, Sandbox, but I haven't gone into that one. So I don't know how cool that one is um, or how much you can do. Let's see if we can get, we're, we're loading up. Decent, Decentraland's much more 3D graphic <clears throat> intensive. Yeah, here we are. Oh, yeah. Let's see. So it's kind of like Minecraft. <laughs> like, did Minecraft like help shape this? Um, yeah, and well, this actually is more like a 3D world. This is not very blocky like Minecraft, Decentraland. Um, but when I show you mine, Utopia 42, it is much more like Minecraft. But this is Decentraland, and uh, they have like both Decentraland and CryptoVox. These are they should be all real people, all these people standing here. And they have, uh, you know, they have audio chat, so it should be possible to say something. Okay, uh, but how is there, let's just say, like, it's like anything, it's human nature, right? There, there ultimately is no utopia, or that's debatable. But he, it's like communes, right? Like, if essentially, human nature comes into it, and it's almost like you can't have utopia because human nature is human nature, and there'll always be people who steal, or people who murder and rape. Like, how is there, like, like, how do you maintain that people are respectful to one another here and et cetera? Look, people are talking. Can you hear that music? Yep. Uh, so yeah, uh, they have, usually they have ways to report people. Let's see, I should be able to click on someone and uh, let's see, is that a real person, this guy walking around? I think that's a, Let's see if I click on this guy, I get a little profile of him over here. But sometimes there might be a way to, uh, yeah, you can block people. So if they're annoying you, you can at least block them. I mean, I don't know what other security these guys have, but uh, but yeah, in general, people could be mean. And uh, I mean, could they kill you? Could they kill your avatar? Could there be murder? I don't know, not in, not to my knowledge, in crypto voxels or in uh, Decentraland. Okay. But here, I'll, I'll close these and I'll show you now the metaverse that uh, that I built. You ready for another one? Yes. Utopia mine, 42. Yeah. Let me close these because they are uh, sucking up my resources. And those are both built on Ethereum. Mine is built on Polygon. What's Polygon? Is it like another cryptocurrency? Yeah, it's related to Ethereum, but it's it's much less expensive um, to use. So we'll go into, it says Utopia 42. How is Ethereum doing these days? Like the price of it? Or just is it doing well in general? It's still doing, still doing well. It's you know, it's still Bitcoin is the number one cryptocurrency. Ethereum is uh, it's trying to do more fancy things than Bitcoin. It's trying to do basically all sorts of computer, basically whatever a computer can do. Ethereum is trying to do that on a blockchain, and so it's uh, that's a very ambitious goal. So it's but it's still the leader right now. Um, in that type this of This is pocket. yours? This is, yeah. This is the world I built or I hired programmers to build. And uh, you can, over here. Uh, so basically you build with blocks, like here I can like, there I, I built, I just put a block in. So they're like Minecraft. Um, and you can fly around and I got them to, uh, make it so we can put in images and we can import 3D models. So I got this 3D model of the Millennium Falcon <laughs> and uh, stuck that in there. Why not? Yeah, and then I put some some images uh, in here, some art and this right here, you see this guy, this is a 3D scan of me. I put a giant 3D scan of myself right there. No comment, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and it's then, cool. yeah. It's cool. 
Ooh, is that yeah. for like movies projector screen? Um, I, I mean, at the moment, it's just a giant image sitting like, there. But but that, that is one of the things we want to do is to make it a place where you can like you know go and sh and show a, a video or something and and sh and sort of have a shared experience like that. So, but the, I mean, basically, in here, all you can do is buy land, build on it, and put art, put uh, 3D images. But the, the whole point to me is that then you can save it and it can last forever. So it's like what you, and my idea with Utopia 42 is to build one to make a place where you can create art, but to um, design it in a way that is, uh, it's built to end depression, to make it so that if you had a, a million people in here, it's made to uh, help people share power and make decisions together in a non-oppressive way. Hmm. And so that won't be as obvious with uh, looking at this world, but I have another app to show you, which mm -hmm. sort of explains that, yeah. But this is, this is Utopia 42. This is my version. This is my, the world that we've built to, you know, to be a place where you can buy land. And so this is, this is a map of it. And this is, people have bought all these parcels. People have bought like random people that you don't know. Yeah, but, but they bought it. They bought these when it was uh, basically free to buy. So we haven't released it yet um, to get people in there spending much significant real money. We're about to have a building contest. So these down here, if you can see these parcels, all these little squares are parcels that I made for uh, so that we can have people do a building contest. Each one gets a parcel and they can just build whatever incredible thing they can build. And then we'll give prizes to the best ones That's as a way cool. to sort of get things going. And so how All do right. they build it? Like they just, they are, it's a pro within the program, kind of like a game. Yeah, it, once you just, once you go there, you just, uh, you get your parcel and you can build like in Minecraft just by clicking blocks. Oh, there's a nice crash. Okay, so we crashed Utopia 42. Uh-oh. But that's all right. All right, so now we're gonna show, you ready for another one? Yes. Okay, let me start this up and then I'll share screen again. So like how much does the, not the dissenter, but the very first one, the cyber- uh, Crypto voxels. The crypto boxes, how much do they sell property for? Uh, like thousands of dollars to get a piece of property in crypto voxels now. Decentraland also like, let me see, I get offers now around one Ethereum. So around, you know, my small parcels are worth two to $3,000 at least right now. The ones that you've bought in Decentraland? Uh, in crypto voxels. So fascinating to me that like people <laughs> don't understand. I mean, it just got to think of it like it's a limited resource, you know, and it might be, a lot of it right now, though, is just specu speculation. People are thinking, I don't think people really know what the metaverse is going to turn into. So it's sort of like the VHS Betamax competition right now. People are trying to buy the right thing to be in the right position mm -hmm. for the future. Um, but I think, you know, that's why I'm thinking more about like, what is the actual purpose of the metaverse? And what I'm trying to build is things that will benefit humanity. Um, well, yeah, like ending depression. That's definitely a very. Um, did you say depression or oppression? <laughs> well, both. I think didn't you say ending depression? No, oppression. Oh, I, you said oppression. I was. Yeah, very I mean, I don't know how to end de depression. For I was people. like, who needs a therapist? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but oppression in the sense that you know, imagine you, me, and like everyone in our family had to decide how to spend $100,000. You know how, what a nightmare that would be? Oh, let me share this screen so you can see this. Um, all right, you ready? Now I'm, I'm going to show you the vortex. The vortex. This is the vortex. 
in your utopia 40 no this is a different thing a different app i hired some ukrainian software developers well, I and hope they built okay. this. what <laughs> i hope they're doing okay yeah they had to flee to the other side of the country oh my god but they're still in communication and actually the so the team is still in communication with me but the one of the coders uh they're like we're gonna have to get a new coder oh my god yeah because he's uh i guess he's fighting in the war or he's too Jesus. affected by it but yeah it's really scary yeah so this is the vortex and this is kind of what i wanted to do at the center of utopia 42 so if you could imagine this being the center of my of my utopia 42 world okay and i've actually i bought some land here in port townsend that i'm going to build something very similar to this so it's basically a, a circle of 12 seats and I are you starting I... a cult is that what you're trying to tell me so that's interesting no because a cult would have a cult leader and i have no interest in being a cult leader but okay. it does make it awkward to try to share ideas that you think uh would would help groups of people without like becoming like uh listen to me i know everything everyone do what i'm saying yeah. so what the way this is built is if you dropped in here then the basically the environment just gives you certain ways to interact with other people that is oppression free so for one say like say uh you know all of our relatives dropped into this vortex with us and we had a big decision to make um what you could do if you wanted to talk to each other the only way to do that is you have to sit in one of these 12 seats so okay. you could all walk around and i'm going to go ahead and sit in one of the 12 seats so now i sat there and now it says your turn matt and the countdown and if I want to talk, I could start talking now. My microphone is on, and I have got one minute to say what I have to say. And Anybody if I'm, when can I'm, interrupt you, they can't because their microphone's not on. Perfect. Yeah. So just imagine, you know, uh, one. I mean, if you think about like wisecracks, you know, that's one of like, or it's just like you cut out. I mean, it's basically. I, I bet this is built to stop every form of. Uh, <laughs> oppression that people that we've learned through our family that people do for in their verbal conversations and interactions so one you can't do a wisecrack because your microphone's not on so i get to talk blah 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 and now when and then when you're done you just press r and now your turn's over and it goes to whoever is sitting down and they get 30 seconds and or they can just keep on passing and it'll just keep going around and you just sit until um it's your turn so let's say everyone had a lot to say so if everyone like has a ton to say everyone you, you just sit and everyone gets an exactly equal amount of time and then it passes and there's no way for one person to dominate and just yeah. be like going on and on and on and on yeah that's actually good for like classrooms could use this for mediations and for talk circles and like restorative justice circles where it's like nope you only get this amount of time and like, you know, it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, it's basically like a talking stick. You know, talking yeah. stick is an ancient technology, but it doesn't <laughs> solve the problem of people hogging time. Yep. And it doesn't good. solve the wisecracking problem. And it also doesn't really solve uh, if you have 100,000 people. So, um, and you still need somebody to create the space for where you know and get people sit in a circle and agree this object is a talking stick so you have to you have to do all that logistics repeatedly every time so this is intended to be i mean i i actually think you could basically structure a society around using vortexes like this so you could have this could be a permanent physical place and a permanent virtual place where and it where if you want to talk to people you come and you listen or you sit and talk and um so you would you would use this physically in the town where you live to like just have people come to like talk about town issues well you could use it to talk about whatever you wanted um so if this was a 
the, the next step after I sort of get this perfected so I know it's working well is to give this vortex power. So one way is to like set, to give this vortex a hundred dollars and you might see like up here there's a hundred dollars into this in this vortex bank piggy bank or something right mm -hmm. and you just and then you make it so that hundred dollars will be sent wherever everyone in this room agrees for it to go and the vortex will you just you'll just talk and talk and it, it once everyone votes yes send that hundred dollars to carry then it'll go and now you've turned the vortex into not only a place where you can equally share verbal space but now it's also a place that supports consensus and they have genuine power over something that if you sit here and in, and invest are willing to like talk until you guys come to agreement you could now control money in a using a, an unoppressive form of decision making the only way to like the only way you could possibly abuse that is you know by i mean anyway there's always ways to try to game a system like you could still like if we imagine we had our whole family here and say we had a hundred thousand dollars that like say you know say i leave a hundred thousand dollars to the family and it's like it's going to sit here until everyone in the family agrees how it's going to go <laughs> you know where it's to go yeah. they'd be forced to share time equally mm -hmm while they go around and the money wouldn't go anywhere until everyone agreed. Um, I mean, the only, you can disrupt that by just never agreeing and try to wear people down by time, you know, and see if it could like just take, just never agree and maybe everyone will start leaving and then that might be a way, but, um, <laughs> but anyways, it, it's mainly just to, to create a space where you can just talk about anything and people can't hog time and can't over talk each other. And I think that alone, that's a gift. Is, that alone is, yeah, I'm looking forward. So this would be the type of place I'd want you to host. So you would come in, you would sit down, you would be, and you'd be here to explain, this is how this works. If you want to talk, sit on a, one of the stones. If you don't want to talk, you just want to listen, then you stand up by pressing E. Now I've stood up and you can just stand outside the circle and just listen to people. And if okay. there's like, if a hundred people, well, let's say you can go up to like 25 people in the room right now, but we should be able to build it. So a hundred people could be in the room or more. And if all the stones are filled, then you press this button to get in line. And now, as soon as someone gets up to leave, you would take the next spot that's open. And so it could okay. just go like that all day long. You know, uh, a, it's like a, a comfortable talking circle where, you know, uh, you just get in line and so there's no way to jump the line you just if you're here you get in line and get to sit in the queue this is cool i feel like this could be very therapeutic and also there's this circle like they, it's an experiential kind of group dynamics thing where it's called the here and now and mm -hmm. the, like you just tell people like this is your group and it, you just have to the only rule is like you have to be in the here and now and then that's it that's what you say and it's fascinating because then people are like wait, what, what does that mean? And like starting to like worry or compare or get competitive and like all those, you know, like who's the leader and who's the silent person and who's the jokester. And you start to see all these like, like projection and scapegoating. It's really interesting. That could be like, this could be a cool space for that. Yeah. Well, see, I mean, that's like one of the, I mean, I, I've spent, you know, when I was living at the eco village, spent so much time in meetings. And so I've just been sort of studying the ways people, the ways people ruin things, you know, <laughs> and it's like, you know, uh, <laughs> and one of the things is like, say you have a, uh, you know, if you're, even if you're just trying, everyone's trying to be polite and you're trying to be like, let's just do a round, you know, and we, we, we say we go around the circle. It's this is brought to you by spin. Oh, nice. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna have a seltzer. Do we get like sponsorship for advertising? <laughs> I mean, to you totally could. <laughs> Actually, yeah, what about advertising in the space? I mean, it could be done. I haven't really focused on- I'm sure it will be eventually. I mean, it's, it's up to those of us to control it, whether or not what we do for uh, monetizing it. 
<clears throat> this is very interesting. I'm liking this little woodsy circle with the fireplace. Yeah. So, so to me, this, fire. Yeah. To me, this is what the metaverse, this is what needs to be at the center of the metaverse. That's why I built this. Cause it's like one giving people like, uh, cause you know, if you have a plot of land in the metaverse, it's basically one place where you can express yourself and, you know, you can express yourself by sticking a video there or an, a building or a 3d object or a piece of art, or even writing, you can put whatever you want, but that's one form of expression. If you want to have real time verbal expression, then we need safe places yeah. to do that safe that you can't abuse because people whether or not they're doing it out of malice or selfishness, or they're just, you know, they just don't know. Because when you're trying to, to talk and share, you don't want to think about how much time do I have? Or am I like, you know, am I taking too much time? Am I talking too long? Because people who are shy, they end up then like just trying to be really brief and end their turn. And then people that don't care, they just talk long and everyone just resents them. <laughs> and then the wise cracks and then the people who think they're hilarious and they're they want to like crack jokes or just like they just want to talk whenever their mind gives them something to say you know there's a lot of people they just don't care about trying to share space they're just like it's just a free flow when they feel like talking they talk and mm -hmm. they're it's not that they're bad people they just don't care and they don't it's just not a priority they just assume if you want to talk you talk and we're just going to compete for the space yeah wow so, so this is will people have to buy their spot on the rocks or no they just show up no nope, this this is going to be available on uh, for free you do have to install the, the software so you have to install this software to to jump into this vortex we couldn't get it to work just in a web browser because of the audio is so um it's so tricky getting audio like to turn your mic on and turn this one off and just have that go around smoothly we couldn't really get that to work in a browser very well so but, people, uh, how will you get this software out there to people well we have it um we're releasing it on what's called the steam network um which is a it's a it's a website a platform where you can release video games and stuff oh, nice. and uh so yeah we we registered there and we have a uh, a page on there with little graphics and they do a little code review of it so people feel a little more it's hard to get people to install software but if you distribute it through someone that's a fairly trusted platform it shouldn't be that hard so we're just we're going to start with um you know some events and we're going to First, just get people, we're actually gonna pay people to come in here and be beta testers. So we, we basically, and we've done one beta test already with, we got like 10 people in from all different parts of the world. English was usually a second language. So it was hard to understand people and the software was kind of funky, but it, it basically worked. But we wanna do more of that. And, but you really do need somebody there to uh, sort of be the MC. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted to get to a point where it's just like, it like facilitates itself. It's so obvious you just sit and talk. Um, Let's do one together. I'd like to observe how you're going to start to run it and explain it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as soon as Steam approves the, our software, we're in like code review right now. And my Ukrainian software developers are, are trying to like, you know, they've, they've reviewed it twice and they, they say there are a couple things we need to fix. So they're trying to, once they get it, you know, uh, approved on Steam, then we can get people, beta testers and people to uh, install it. And then we can do some events. Super cool. Yeah. Yay. Ah, well, there's your little tour of the uh, metaverse and my software platforms. I like right, it. So I'm going to stop recording so then we can just like chat more. Sounds good. That takes the uh, stop.